Today we will be talking about inverse scattering. I'm visiting Rutgers University and Professor Fiora Alba Kakoni. What is scattering? It's scattering of waves. Mm -hmm. It describes how waves interact with various objects. And how about the inverse? Ah, the inverse? inverse scattering is seeing with waves. One sends waves to probe some hidden objects and from the response that gets back tries to infer information about that hidden object. It's cool. like magic. Oh, wonderful. We'll take a look at a couple of examples of inverse scattering. Seeing with microwaves produces curious images. The mathematics of inverse scattering makes visual sense out of indirect wave measurements. But microwaves are invisible to the human eye. Therefore, we explain the basics of inverse scattering using something more tangible – water waves. This is a satellite view of a plane wave, such that would arise in the ocean under steady south wind. Imagine a round island in the middle of the ocean. The plane wave interacts with it and gets disturbed. Since we know the exact shape of the plane wave, we can subtract it to see only the scattered wave. In the case of east wind, there is a similar but differently oriented disturbance. And we can again extract the scattered wave. Summing up, all the scattered waves for different wind directions is called a J0 probing. The result is a J0 scattered wave which is a mathematical construction not occurring in the real world. For an off-center island, the J0 scattered wave is non-symmetric. Let's take our first look at inverse scattering. Here are two islands imaged under cloudy conditions. We can't see the islands directly, but the J0 scattered waves reveal information about their locations. Inverse scattering can also offer information about the size of the island. For example, we can deduce the radius of the round island located at the center. Let's see how that works. Wind speed affects the wavelength of ocean waves, defined as the distance between successive wave crests. For example, with a modest uh, 8 meters per second wind, the wavelength of ocean waves is 20 meters. With a stronger 18 meters per second wind, the wavelength is 100 meters. Let's use waves for probing a hidden round island uh, located at the center to find its radius. As we already know, the J0 scattered wave is perfectly symmetric. The new thing is to observe the island under varying wind conditions, finding just the right wavelength, revealing the radius. We start from low wind speed and short wavelength, and then increase them gradually up to storm levels. At a certain wavelength, here 80 meters, there is almost no J0 scattering at all. That's the magic wavelength that tells us the radius of the island. Mathematical theory of scattering gives us this formula, where z is the location of a zero value of the Bessel function j1. The Bessel function is a relative of the sine and cosine functions, invented in the 1820s. Mathematicians have calculated the value of z to high accuracy. We observed before that wavelength 80 gives almost no J0 scattering. So we get the radius r equal to z times 80 over 2 pi to be 48.8 meters, which is very close to the true value of 50 meters. Next we take a quiz. Which one of the two round central islands is bigger? A or B? We will reveal the answer at the end of the video. Mm -hmm. 
So inverse scattering tells us the location and size of a single round island. But how about two islands? What is their response to probing them with plane waves? Is the scattered wave from two islands just simply the sum of the scattered waves from each individual island? The answer is no. There is significant difference coming from multiple scattering. This nonlinearity is what makes inverse scattering such an interesting and challenging topic to study. Here you see the scattered wave of the west side island alone, and here the same for the east side island. This is the sum of those two single island scattered waves. It is a mathematical construction only, not a true wave. The scattered wave created by the two islands looks actually like this. Is it any different from the simple sum we saw before? We can subtract the artificial sum wave from the actual scattered wave. The colors are weak, as the difference wave is smaller in amplitude than the scattered wave. We can enhance the contrast to see the difference better. The effect of nonlinear multiple scattering looks like the two islands are exchanging waves between them. We have seen that information about the location, size, shape and number of islands is encoded into the scattered waves in a complicated way. Moreover, there are further difficulties in practical inverse scattering arising from severely restricted measurements. Namely, not always is a large part of the wave visible to the observer as it was in our satellite images. For example, Think of the ancient master navigators in the Marshall Islands in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. They developed wave-based navigation methods for cloudy weather when the sun or stars were not visible. They used stick diagrams, like the ones you see here, for understanding the scattered waves from islands resulting from plane waves driven by steady trade winds in the Pacific Ocean. The navigators lied down on the bottom of the canoe and felt the rocking of the waves. They found the right way by comparing their feelings to the stick diagrams they had memorized. Let's examine this inverse scattering problem in the form of another quiz. And this one will be truly difficult. Here is the starting point of an imaginary boat trip in the Marshall Islands. And the goal of our virtual seafarers is this group of islands. A steady northeast trade wind creates an incoming plane wave that gets scattered by the islands. The boat here is slightly north of the route and should turn right, or nautically speaking, starboard. On the other hand, this boat has traveled too far south and needs to turn left or to the port side to reach the goal. The navigators are supposed to find the right way by just feeling the waveform. Can you tell which boat is which by just looking at the wave pattern? I know I cannot. At least not without a proper stick diagram. Inverse scattering techniques are also used in other types of waves than water waves. Radar uses radio waves to monitor air traffic around airports and to predict the movement and type of rain clouds. The structures of DNA and hemoglobin molecules were revealed using inverse scattering of X-rays in Nobel Prize winning studies. In the animal kingdom, dolphins and bats find their way by the backscattering of sound waves. Thanks for watching. Thank you. And we'll be back with another video with more advanced stuff on inverse scattering. Yes, looking forward to it.